Good morning, and uh, thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I want to take you to a journey to space. And uh, what I brought with me is not the result of some scientific experiment. It's not a strange potato. This is actually a scale model of asteroid Itokawa. Itokawa was visited 12 years ago by a Japanese space crowd. And the real size of this asteroid in this direction is actually twice the size of the Tour Eiffel, or the Eiffel Tower. Like this, there are millions of asteroids orbiting the Sun every day. And these asteroids are the leftovers of the formation of the solar system, what actually didn't make it into a planet. In their orbit around the Sun, sometimes they collide, and sometimes they cross the orbit of the Earth. And sometimes they do impact our planet. Small asteroids um, enter into the atmosphere and they burn. We see them in the night when we see a shooting star. We close our eyes and we make a wish. But um, four years ago, an asteroid entered over the sky of Chelyabinsk, a remote city in Siberia. And it exploded. It exploded in the atmosphere. The shockwave injured 1,500 people. Not because it hit them, but because it broke the glasses. They were looking out of the window what was going on. Larger asteroids don't burn in the atmosphere. And they reach the ground, and they make a big crater. This map shows all of the asteroid impact craters that are still visible today on our planet. Kind reminders, right? Probably the most famous one is that white a uh, dot you see in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. That's a 200 kilometers wide ast uh, asteroid impact crater, which is associated with the extinction of the dinosaurs. But I'm not here to talk about asteroid impacts, and I'm not here to scare you. Did I scare you? <laughs> I'm actually here to talk about different type of impact an impact that I find much more interesting and I've been working on for the last 10 years. And this is about going into space with a spacecraft and actually hit an asteroid. And why we do it, we hit it really hard. Um, asteroid impacts is the only natural hazard that not only we can predict, but the good news is that we can also do something about it. And there's a big difference between us and the dinosaurs. As a species, about 50 years ago, we made a very wise decision, which was to establish space programs. And within these space programs, we spent the last 10 years working out a solution. And the good news is, not only we have a solution, but we actually found three solutions, so sales. Um, now, unfortunately, Bruce Willis if you've seen the movie, he dies in the end, so we could not recruit him. <laughs> and Ben Affleck, uh, he was not a good driller. So I'm not as sexy as them, but we could hire the best engineers and the best scientists in Europe to work on what I consider to be the most amazing project. And, I've been parting, and, and I'm part of this team. I have the privilege of working with these people. So. What are these three techniques? In red, you see the first one is the nuclear deflection. The second technique is called kinetic impactor in orange. And the third technique is called gravity tractor. If you look at this plot, what you see is that the three solutions, the three techniques, are complementary to one another, depending on two factors, the size of the asteroid and the warning time. How much time before the impact do you know that this asteroid is coming? Now, depending on these two factors, you can, you can pick one of the other tools. There's a little thin blue uh, area on the bottom, and this is for very small asteroids. And for very small asteroids, independently of the warning time, there's only one thing you can do is to evacuate. Now, um, let's have a look. So the nuclear deflection is about bringing a nuclear device near the surface of the asteroid, let it explode, and so that the energy 
deposits on the surface of the asteroid and push it, pushes it away. Now, this technique works for very large asteroids and asteroids with a warning time uh, that is very short. So, in other words, this is our last resort. The good news is that we know most of the largest asteroids. This is what the international community is looking, has been looking uh, for in the last 20 years with the telescopes. And now we have mapped over 90% of them, and we know these are not going to hit. Problem is with the smaller asteroids. For small asteroids, we have another solution, which is a, taking a very massive spacecraft nearby the asteroid and literally use its own gravity to pull the asteroid away from its trajectory. Now, this technique, of course, works for small asteroids, and the force, which is the same that, you know, the Earth exerts on us and keeps us, our feet on the ground. So the gravity of the, of the spacecraft is so small that it only works if you let it run for many, many years. So it's asteroids that need a very long uh, warning time. The third solution is the kinetic impactor. Kinetic impactor is very simple. It's like the billiard game. You send a spacecraft as fast as you can, and you hit the uh, asteroid. Now, the velocity you will change at the asteroid is small. It's millimeter per second. But if you have a few years before the impact, this is enough to nudge it off the course. After all, in cosmic space, Earth is a very, very small dot. The other thing is that this technique works for a wide range of asteroid sizes between a few hundred meters and a kilometer, which is where the international community is putting its currently its best efforts to find them. There are millions of them. So this is actually the technique that we've been working on in the last 10 years. What this simulation shows you is a kinetic impactor of an asteroid. We do the, this is the highest fidelity simulation uh, we can do today, supercomputers, not in China, but in Europe. Um, every single dot you see in this simulation is numerically computed. The trajectory you see in blue is the result of many, many, many hours of computing time. And, but the question is, is this correct? How do we know whether we got it right? How do we know whether it works? Of course, we do experiments. We, take, we cannot take a 300-meter rock. We take a small rock, we put it in a lab, and we shoot at it at hypervelocity, kilometer per second. And then we extrapolate. But in this extrapolation of the results, how do we know if we get it right? Well, the only way to know is actually go out there in outer space with a spacecraft and, hard, and hit an asteroid as hard as you can. So this is the best experiment uh, we have conceived to test the kinetic impactor, and it's called AIDA. It's an international collaboration between the European Space Agency and NASA, and the experiment is very simple. We hit a small moon of an asteroid orbiting a, around a larger asteroid, like the Earth and the Moon. And the ultimate objective is to change the orbital motion of the Moon, like in a deflection, and to, and to measure this uh, change. To do that, we go first with a, a European spacecraft called AIM, and we measure all the characteristics of this small Moon. We want to know, like in a lab, all of the conditions so that after the experiment, we can rebuild it in our, in our computers and validate our models. Once we know everything about this moon, we send an American spacecraft called DART to impact the moon at uh, six kilometers per second. And the velocity change is half a millimeter per second. This is small, but if you let it build up over time, you will find out that two weeks after the impact, the asteroid will actually be on the opposite side as it would have been before the impact. Now, what if I were to tell you that this mission from launch to the end of the experiment takes only two years? And what if I were to tell you that you could actually see the impact with your own eyes if you were to go to a telescope that night? 
Isn't this the coolest mission ever? Well, if you're not convinced this is what uh, you, it would look like if you were sitting in space, this is the AIM spacecraft arriving at the asteroid and using all of his instruments to characterize the moon. Most important is the surface properties, the, the shape, and the interior structure. And then from a safe distance, watch the, as the asteroid impact from DART. And after the, the impact, characterize the crater, the shape gives a lot of information, and measure this deflection. Cool, huh? So, since it's the coolest mission, and it's important for humanity, of course, uh, must be extremely expensive. Otherwise, we would have done it. So let's, let's have a look. The uh, cost of the spacecraft, the cost of the rocket, putting the spacecraft on the rocket, and all of the team, the management for the AIM mission cost 250 million euros. It's a lot of money. But if, you, if only French citizens were to pay for this mission, it would cost three euros, 85 cents. Now, if you go to Paris and you find a nice bar and you sit at a table, this is the average cost <laughs> of a coffee. So think about it next time you go to Paris. But as I'm a European, and I believe uh, this project has all the ingredients and should be dealt with at European level, this is what it would cost each European citizen, 34 cents. Another way to look at it is, imagine we would build a new Formula One track. The cost of building a new track is 248 million euros, comparable. We like sports. Another way is the Summer Olympics. The cheapest ever Summer Olympic was in 64 in Tokyo, and the cost was 282 million. The most expensive one was 60 times the cost of the emission, 15 billion euros. Now, I want to conclude with uh, three questions, and don't worry, I'm going to answer the questions which were the same question that uh, the UK Astronomer Royal Sir Bondi uh, replied to the Queen when, in the 1950s when he was asked um, to, to assess whether the project to build uh, barriers over the River Thames in London uh, to avoid future floods uh, was to be built. It was a very expensive project, and the question was, should we do it? Are, we, are there going to be other flooding? Is it worth investing all of this money? He answered with three questions. The first question is, is this going to happen again? Is this natural event going to happen? And my answer is yes. Independently of what kind of statistics you look at it, this is going to happen again one day. The second question is, do we have the technical capabilities to prevent it? And if we do, implementing those means, is it going to disrupt our economy? Now, the answer is, we have the technical capabilities, and if we do implement them, it's not going to change our economy. It doesn't, it's not going to affect our economy. And the third question is, as a civilized society that has the means and the capabilities, is it conceivable that we don't do anything to prevent it? He didn't answer that question, and I want to answer it today. And my answer is yes, we need to go out there now that we have the time and impact an asteroid really hard. Thank you.